Hey folks, welcome back to Halo Canon. So before we get into the latest Canon fodder article, I need to address something. The audio. Recently, my laptop finally crapped out after almost five years. This laptop allowed me to record in a smaller room with minimal background noise and echo. Without it, I can only record in front of my desktop in a large room. So the audio quality may take a bit of a hit going forward, at least for a little while. I'm working on replacing the laptop, but obviously I don't have an ETA on that. Just want to give you all the heads up and let you know, and I hope you'll bear with me on this. With that out of the way, let's take a look at Cannon Fodder. This week is rather exciting as we get a major announcement alongside some smaller Canon details. So, let's dive in. We open with the announcement of a project that myself and many others have been asking for for years. This week 343 has announced Halo Warfleet, an illustrated guide to the spacecraft of Halo. I seriously can't express how excited this has left me. We're talking about a visual guide with full cross-sections of ships and space stations, details on colony worlds, and a general resource of the Halo universe's technology, scale, design, and construction. I've always been a huge fan of the cross-section books for Star Wars, and it's long overdue that Halo would get the same treatment. But perhaps even more exciting is that these cross-sections will be illustrated by Hans Jensen, best known for the aforementioned Star Wars cross-sections, and John Milani, known for his cross-sections from the Firefly universe. In addition, secondary art will be provided by Sparth, Darren Bacon, Glenn Israel, Isaac Hannaford, Tyler Jeffers, and Carlos Naranjo. Many of those names should sound familiar from Halo Mythos. The book itself will be divided into five sections. Introduction slash technical architecture, human ships, covenant ships, forerunner ships, and a, quote, expansive glossary. As mentioned before, I am excited as hell. While this book won't be out until late 2017, meaning we can probably expect a September-October release date at the earliest, this is a project I have been waiting for for many years and one I sincerely hope sets a trend going forward. Mythos was a great starting point for a new line of Halo guidebooks, and if we as fans can ensure the success of Warfleet, it stands to reason that we could expect to see similar projects exploring the finer details of the Halo universe going forward. Personally, I'd love to see one that shows the inner workings of Mjolnir, specs on various UNSC gear, Sangheili combat harnesses and their various types, etc, etc. How about you guys? Are you excited for Warfleets? And what other sorts of guys would you want to see? Moving on though, the second subject today is a look at some Ground Command extras, UNSC and Covenant scenery boxes. Anyone familiar with tabletop games can tell you the importance of scenery, and Ground Command is no exception. While this sort of thing may seem rather small, it's interesting to think about after 15 years, we've had all these items that have largely gone unnamed and sometimes without description, something many would argue is vital in the case of the Covenant gear if nothing else. So this week, Grimm and Spartan Games rectify that. In the UNSC pack, we start with the JW Armory Storage Cabinet. The weapons rack can be configured in multiple ways to meet mission needs, and is easily secured if necessary. In addition to weapons, it can carry ammo boxes, spare parts, optics, and maintenance tools. Next is the MEP-PU-2550D-E generator, or fusion reactor. These air transportable fusion power plants are used by UNSC Army and Air Force units to meet mobile power requirements, particularly in areas where integrated solar panels and wind turbines are insufficient or inappropriate. After that we have the M72 Large Mobile Barrier, an armored shield that can be moved via drop-down travel wheels and a steering lever, or towed by a utility vehicle. Following that is the M72 Small Mobile Barrier, a smaller version. Next is the 463L Master Pallet. It's a cargo pallet, what, what more do you need to know? Finally we have the Transit Box DR44. These cargo crates feature wireless access to packaging lists, GPS tracking, environmental sealing, and ballistic rated materials. On the Covey side, we start with the COM relay known as the Spike of Obeisance, which acts as a combination of proselytization network uplinks, communication hubs, and sensor relay nodes. Next is the Emplacement Shield, or Pavis of the Worthy, or simply the Energy Shield. Interestingly, they are held in place by gravitic anchors, giving a canon reason for why they never seem to move. After that, we have the good old Space Crate, aka Almar Pattern Repository. In the games, these are very often seen holding weapons, but they can come in a number of configurations, something that, quote, drove Oni analysts to distraction. Post-war, it was discovered that the Sunghili were often just as confused as to the special function of some units and never entirely sure of their contents. Next is the Covenant Defense Barrier, or Guardian Triptych. These barriers were capable of blocking paths for vehicles and providing cover, 
but also contains systems which broadcast subsonic signals that both deter local wildlife and has a soothing effect on nearby Yan Maya. So I guess we have a canon reason for the lack of wildlife in games. You know, besides the active war zones. Finally, we have the infamous plasma battery itself, the Vantus Pattern Eala Pile. These batteries are used to power field equipment and recharge plasma-based small arms. So now we know how the Covenant reload plasma weapons, so to speak. Funny thing though, it was once theorized by a number of fans that the space crates actually served as recharge stations. And that's all for this episode. I loved learning the names of some of these objects we've seen in the battlefield for years, but of course the announcement of Halo Warfleet stole the show. I can't wait to learn more about this book in the coming year and just how many ship types and perhaps how many new ships we might see in there. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.